Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic on a truly horrible day here in the UK. It is filthy outside, um, but I am going to distract myself from this awful weather by indulging in one of life's great pleasures. At least I hope it will be a great pleasure. I'm going to have a go at a puzzle called Double Self Referral by the Dutch master Ard van der Weetering. Um and I will tell you, the reason I'm a little bit nervous about this is that we haven't actually had managed to get this tested. Um, none of the testers could do it, um, which is, it's very unusual for an ARD puzzle. ARD was responsible, of course, for our most popular video ever. Um, the puzzle, I think we called it the Sudoku with only four given digits. And throughout the life of Cracking the Cryptic, ARD's puzzles have been enjoyed by literally millions and millions of solvers. Um, and they normally... They're so clever because they're not normally brutally hard. Uh, they normally involve a trick or two, but once you see the trick, they sort of fill in. Um, but anyway, no one's been able to do this. Um, so uh, I'm taking a small risk, but it, it's it's the least I can do. I love arts puzzles as a rule, and hopefully I'll be able to make my way through it, even though this might be a long video. Let, let us see. Uh, the rules are really short, and it's some sort of indexing thing going on. Uh, and in fact, let me, I'll just read you the rules now so we can think about them when I do the birthdays. But it says, um, normal Sudoku rules apply. Well, no, it doesn't say that. I, I extrapolated that because I saw it said place one to nine in each row column. And then I realized, realized it said and marked region once each. So that means that we've got, um, we have got a regular Sudoku. Um, so we've got to put the digits one to nine in every row in every column but we don't have three by three block boxes today or well we actually have one there but we have um uh, we have regions look so those squares there should be nine of them and there are so they have to contain the digits one to nine once each as well um, so it has irregulars normally have properties that you have to think about to do with things like the law of leftovers if you've ever heard of that in sudoku well, you might be about to learn more about it, but the, but the, the 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 extra rule here, you can see we've hardly got any given digits at all, so we're not going to be able to solve this as an irregular puzzle unless there is an extra rule. And the extra rule is that when digit Z is in cell brackets X comma Y, then digit Y is in cell X comma Z, and digit X is in cell Z comma Y. And I haven't got a clue what that means, but when we actually do the rules properly, we will think about what, what that means. You'll be, you should be able to see it on your screens now and dive into the puzzle if, if that is your bent. Um, anyway, anyway, more, more about the puzzle in a moment or two. What do I need to tell you? Well, one thing is that we are streaming tonight at 10 o'clock UK time. So it might be about the time this video finishes, <laughs> you can just skip over to the stream and watch Mark and I do battle with this wonderful puzzle game, Islands of Insight. It almost feels like it was made for us, frankly. It is absolutely beautiful and full. 10,000 puzzles, I think. Um, and I know that the puzzles are hand generated um, and there's an, a whole raft of puzzle makers uh, in, in the credits. Um, I exchanged emails with Elliot Grant this week about it. So uh, I, I'm really stoked to have another go at that puzzle. Or that game um, and yeah that's that should be coming imminently I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen other than that just to mention we've got our patreon uh, the best Sudoku club on, on on earth we have our competition running until the 20th to solve a brand new Sudoku hunt that's over there at the moment so do have a go at that and there's loads of extra content as well now let's turn our attention to birthdays and I will start by wishing Diane a very happy 33rd birthday from your husband Cameron uh, I know Cameron is making you pasta carbonara and cake today, Diane. So that sounds quite good. Um, and apparently your Labrador Milo might help with both unless there is chocolate in the cake. Well, Diane, frankly, I hope for your sake there is chocolate in the cake because that's really the best type of cake. Milo can make do with the leftover pasta, car pasta carbonara, but many happy returns. It sounds like you're going to have a very good day. Uh, next, Belinda, it's your birthday today. Many happy returns. Um, Simon wrote to us and said, uh, well, said what an absolute legend you've been. Um, I know Simon's been suffering from nerve pain. Sounds excruciating. 
for the last couple of months and he is very grateful for all you've done to him but all you've done for him belinda um and uh, many happy returns i hope you're able to have chocolate cake today um next nancy has turned 65 today and i know this because your husband stephen wrote in um, and the email was headed, well, to the most caring, most beautiful and most patient woman in the world. So, Nancy, you have a very appreciative husband there. And I hope you have a great birthday today. Thank you for watching the channel. And I hope you get chocolate cake. And then Stuart, uh, it's your birthday today. And I know this because your sister Abigail wrote to us. Uh, and I have to thank you um, uh Stuart for for converting abigail to uh, cracking the cryptic um and th this wonderful world of variant sudoku and then finally i have to i have an apology to make i missed a very important 28th wedding anniversary which happened on the 9th of march and this was um for jeremy and stacy over there in virginia and i was meant to shout this out and i somehow got my diary mixed up uh, and I would have shouted it out in about a year's time, which is no, of no help to man nor beast. Um, but Jeremy and Stacy, I'm so sorry. I hope you had a brilliant day and I, I hope you can forgive me. Um, and um, I hope you had cake and it was it was good cake. And uh, yeah, sorry. Um, is that all? Is that I don't want to miss anyone else's anniversaries or birthdays. Um, I think it's everything. Let's turn our attention to doing some Sudoku solving. I have already read the rules of Ard's Puzzle, but I, I just want to think about the rules and try and understand what they mean. Um, so this this second line of the rules with all of this Z's, X's and Y's in it. If digit Z is in, so there's a digit. Let's say that that's Z. So five is in cell, that's row six, column six, isn't it? So if five is in cell row six, column six, then digit, then si six will be in cell row six, column five. Six will be in row six, column five. So six will be there. That's one of the consequences. There is a second consequence which is that the digit, the digit six again, it must be, is in the cell, oh, what's this? Oh, the cell row five, column six, row five, column six. So that's a six, but good grief. I might have to do another one of those. Sorry, I'm going to have a think about this one as well. Um, if if this time the digit Z is one, if one is in row nine, column nine, then, then nine is in row nine, column one. So nine is there. So this is indexing. This is sort of indexing. Uh, sorry, there's a one more thing, isn't it? I'm, I'm just trying to understand how the indexing works here. Apparently, computer programmers just get this instantly. Unfortunately, I never really got into computer programming which might explain why I don't get these things immediately. And the digit X, which is going to be a nine, is in the cell. cell that's row one now, row one, column nine. So that is also a nine. So, hmm. OK, we well do have a go because I'm starting to solve now. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Um, but now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I mean, I'm not going to take these out of the grid because I think they're just basically given by the by the actual rules. It's almost like these are given digits that we're meant to use to understand how the indexing works. What 
why why does that result what's what effectively this is doing this is in row six and column six so this five is saying throw a six Ah, oh, I still haven't quite got this, you know. Sorry, sorry. If this is obvious to everybody, I'm going to just put something else. I'm going to put a two in there and think about this. Um, so what would I... Let's think about what I would expect this to do. <laughs> I don't really... I've not really built an expectation. I think that is going to do something. Maybe with... Maybe it is indexing a nine into maybe there. And what else is it going to be indexing then? Maybe a four, because it's in the fourth row. So, so there must be, yeah, there must be a, yes, it must be indexing a four somewhere. And that four, is that going to go in the second row then? Uh, maybe. Because uh, because the original, the original, yeah, the original Z would be the two. Yes, okay. So that is how this works. So what happens is, you put a digit in. You look at the column number that the digit is in. So this two is in column number nine, and you write nine into that column number in the row you've put the digit in. So that would be a nine. And then you look at the row number and that's a two. And you say, okay, okay, but you put the row number, which is four into the second row in the same column, I think. I think that's how it works. And are these are these a cycle then? Do the, do, or does let me just now I'm just going to have a think about this one. So row two, column nine. Let me try and do this without reading the rules. So row two, column nine. What do I think? What do I think this four is saying? This four is is no. It's it's not a cycle. It's not a cycle, is it? Because that four is, to, if I understand the rules correctly, that four is saying write a nine, because this column indexes nines into the fourth column. So I think it's putting a nine there. And that's in the second, that's in the second row. Oh yeah, so that that what that one sort of is used up now. So that one resulted in that one and that one. That one results in those two. And this one. That this is in the second row, so I should put a two into there, into the ninth row. And it's in the fourth column. So I should throw a four into the ninth column and I've already got that. So I get an extra two from this. Now this two is saying write a nine into there. That's correct. And it's saying write a ah, four. We've got to put a four in somewhere. Four, because it's in the fourth column. In there perhaps, so it's opposite that one. Right, and then that one. Does this just keep? Maybe this just keeps going. So if we can place one digit, no, it can't keep going. So row, if row nine, column two was a four, that's saying right. Yeah, that's saying right. This nine in, and right two. Yeah. So it, uh, so now, ah, okay. So what's happened here is writing this digit in the grid has given us actually six digits altogether. 
and they're all they're all symmetrical um they're all if, if we were to i don't know if i can do this hang on let's have a go uh, i don't want that color let's go for that color they go they're all symmetrical around this diagonal yeah that's that that is forced by the nature of the equation wherever you put yeah you have to keep cycling until you reach the end of the cycle now the, okay so the interesting thing here so when you uh, it doesn't work the same way on the diagonal itself because when you put a digit that's not on the diagonal the cycle it creates is six six numbers but when we put a digit here I'm just going to check does this have a, an, another implication I don't think it does because it has a repeated digit in its equation what I mean by that is if we think about z if we read the rules which reply z x y if you have a repeated di digit in z x or y so two of the digits are the same it's not as powerful I think so well let's think about this then so this is saying this is saying <laughs> hang on hang on hang on this is a six it's in it's in the fifth row so it's saying write a five into the sixth row in its column which I've already got And this five is in row six. So it, the five is throwing, it, it's in row six, column six. So it throws a six into two positions, both in row five and column five. That's why the one throws the nine into those positions. So everything along this diagonal. Yeah, let, I, think, I think all it'll do, let's just, let's just pick a digit. Let's pick a strange digit. Let's put three in there. Now I think, because that's row seven, column seven, I think that's just going to put sevens into those, isn't it? So again, symmetry across the diagonal, but of limited, a more limited application than my hypothe hypothesized two here. I better take that out because that's not correct, is it? Yeah, okay. Actually, I'm just going to put it back in again. Let me just, I'm just going to double check that I agree. This, this must result in symmetry across this diagonal, I think. Row four, column nine is a two. So basically, four, column nine is a two. It is, it is weird, but it, it does, I think, I think that is what it causes. Because that makes row two, column nine a four. And once row two, column nine is four, once row two, column nine is a four. That's telling you to put a nine in here and a two in here. Once you put a nine in here, that's indexing the two in its column, which so th this is forced as a result of this. But putting that in forces this down here. Exactly opposite it on the diagonal. Yeah, so, so what you get is this sort of a cycle of six digits for any digit that's not on the that doesn't have a, a, a that, that doesn't have a repeated digit in its coordinate. So 
So the positive diagonal just doesn't work the same way, does it? Because this doesn't have a repeated digit on its diagonal. On its, sorry, in its coordinate. What about if we picked a digit? If we made row 3, column 7. Let's make that a 3. What's that doing? That's throwing 7. Uh, it's throwing... Well, let me just work this out. <laughs> it's throwing a 7 here, I think. And that's throwing a 3 down there. So, so yeah, again, because I've got a digit... Because I've got a repeated digit here, within, the, within X, Y, and Z, I've got a repeated number. I end up having to put a digit on the diagonal as a result of that. Now also, yeah, and then it's indexing itself. Oh, I see, yeah, it indexes itself from a column perspective because it's saying write three into row three. So it indexes itself, but then from a row perspective, it indexes here, which has to have an equivalent, which is down here. And then this will index itself from a column. So again, ah, right. So it's all about, it's all this puzzle is entirely about the symmetry across the negative diagonal, which will occur. No, well, there's always symmetry across the negative diagonal, but whenever you have any combination of x, y, and z that is repeated, it will have a much less profound effect. It will effectively only... Well, actually, what if that's a 3? That just does nothing, does it? That indexes itself three times. That's a 3 in row 3, column 3. So the cycle there just goes... <laughs> Sorry if that's just made a horrible noise down the microphone, but it, it will just go on forever. So the cycle, the cycle just ends if you put if you put a three into row three, column three. If you put a three in the same row number, you'll get you'll get that will cause two more digits to appear in the puzzle. So that three is worth three digits. And if you put a digit like this one, row four, column nine, being a two, you can see four, nine, and two are all different numbers. You're going to get six digits as a result of that. Um, so, oh, my phone is buzzing. That's fine. Um, so, what does that mean then? What that means is. I know one thing I want it to mean, but I'm not sure whether what I'm about to say is right or wrong, so I'm just going to delay saying it for a moment. Hmm. 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 I don't know about this. I'm going to say it. I can't think why it's wrong. Mm, I'm not. I think it must be right. Okay, what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking is this: if I put a digit anywhere, anywhere above the diagonal, but not on the diagonal, we have worked out that that will cause that digit to reflect across the diagonal. So if I put that digit into the puzzle. I will also be able to put that digit, and that digit's going to be the same. So digits occur in pairs across the diagonal when they are not on the diagonal. But there are an odd number of digits to be placed in Sudoku. So I have to put nine nines into this puzzle. I have to put nine sixes. I have to put nine fives. I have to put nine ones. Therefore, I feel like I have to put one of each digit on the diagonal. 
because otherwise I otherwise I don't see how I can achieve oddness an odd number of each digit clearly I can't just I can't get to an odd number of digits by just posting them on either side of the diagonal because every time I put one in I, I cause another one to occur so that means I must have at least one of every digit on the diagonal but there's only nine cells on the diagonal so I must have one of each of those digits on the diagonal. I think that's right. That feels right. And that's interesting. So that means I, I can't have ones or fives in any of these positions. Um, well, apart from the ones that they're already in, obviously. So. Right, what do we do then? Do we have to colour this? That's what I'm thinking now. I mean, 1 and 9 have to be in there by the, by the fact that they have to appear in this region. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is a little instantly interesting, isn't it? I mean, if I just put 1 and 9 in there, those cells, that cell, for example, I don't think that can be a 1. Because if that's a 1, I think that is going to cause that to be a 1. And it's in the same region as that 1. Let's just let's just check that that is correct. So that is row 8, column 7, um, equaling 1. Now, by my understanding of the rules, <laughs> see, that is saying that the 8 should appear here. Because this is in the 8th row. And this is in the 7th column. So the 7 should appear here. I think that's what that's saying. And you may say, ah, but you've not got a 1 here. But I will have by the time I exhaust the implications of these two squares. So this is saying, right, and this is in the 7th column. So I think it's saying, write a 7 into here. And that's good, because that is opposite that one. And this 7 is saying write a 1 into the 7th row, which is there. And that is 6 cells. No, it's not 6 cells of cyclicalness because we haven't got an 8 that's equivalent to this one. So something should make this an 8. And it should be this, I think. And this is in, yes, this is in the 8th column. So in its row, we have to write an 8 into the 1st column. So there you go. Symmetry. Symmetry works as a thing. Right, so that means this is not a 1. Okay, that's... Uh, no, not 9. Um, hang on. One of, one of... No, I'm wrong. So it means there's a 9 in one of those four positions by, sim by symmetry across the diagonal. But that 9 doesn't actually see any of those positions. <sighs> wow, okay. Um, this will be why no one's managed to solve this. This is this is not easy stuff, actually, is it? It's not, it's not. I feel like I've done a lot of thinking. I've 28 minutes of thinking. I've done nothing beyond just do the things we could do in instantly. Nine is in one of those four positions, so it's in one of those four positions. Um, perhaps what we're meant to do is to use the law of leftovers I wonder about that now so yeah I mean well it's, it's an obvious point but one in row seven has to be here and so they must have an equivalent which is there is it oh that's another three by three I thought sorry I thought there was only one three by three in the puzzle but there is another one down here I've, I've suddenly spotted Yeah, I mean, the same, it's diff difficult to really know how to do this, but these two digits also have to appear somewhere in row seven. So they're going to be in there, which means they're going to be in there as well. Uh, 
Um, right. So, oh, no, it's not, actually, that's not even true what I was about to say, so I'm not going to say it. What about, the same is true. Which ones is it? It's going to be these have a relationship, I think. Um, so this this is classic law of leftovers applying there. Um, law of leftovers is just a sort of a simple uh, version of set theory, by the way. If you've ever wondered how the law of leftovers works, um, the way to th one way to think about it, if you're more if you're more comfortable with set theory than you are with other things is to say, okay, can we describe exactly, when we finish this puzzle, what will the green squares contain? And we can describe that exactly, because we know that the green squares will have five sets of the digits one to nine in, won't they? Each of the, there's a five complete rows of the Sudoku. So that's what the green squares will contain. Now, what about if I highlight, instead of five rows of the Sudoku, I'm going to highlight five complete regions of the Sudoku, so I'll highlight those. What will they contain? Well, that's those five, those orange cells there are just five complete regions of this puzzle, so they're also going to contain five sets of the digits one to nine. Now, if we remove all the commonality there, because all of the cells that have green and orange in them are in both sets, we're just left with these. So these must be the same thing because we've just, we had the same thing. We had five sets in, in, of one to nine in green, five sets of one to nine in orange. And I just took out all of the cells that were common. And if you take the same thing out of both sets, what remains in both sets will still be equivalent. So these are equivalent. Um, so these two greens are the same digit as these two oranges. Right. But, okay, but these are... You see, what I was wanting to do was to reflect these across the diagonal, but I don't know... We might, yeah, we might have to split these up a little bit further, actually. Let's try that. Let's make that one blue and this one purple. And what we're saying at the moment is that purple and orange are the same digits as green and blue, but we don't know. But we don't know which is which. But but by splitting the colours up, it's now legitimate for me to say, okay, well, purple we know must be there because it must reflect across the diagonal. Blue must be here. So purple and right, and that just does it straight away. Purple and blue cannot be the same. Because in this region of the puzzle, they exist together. So purple, which we know is the same as either blue or green, is actually the same as green. So we can make purple green again. Um, and therefore we know that blue is actually orange. So, that, so oh, my phone is buzzing. Uh, that's fine. Okay. Now, now we can go further than that because I've not done my reflecting all all my reflections across the diagonal. Look, these have got to reflect. Right. So blue in this box looks restricted to me. It's in one of no, it's in one of one place, actually. That's very interesting. Okay, so this is this is the first moment of during this solve where I've actually felt like I've done something that Ard, Ard's intended me to do. Um, because, look, uh, where is blue? Blue must exist in this region. By Sudoku, I can rule out lots of cells. So it's in one of these three. Now, if blue was here, once I've reflected blue across the diagonal, I've got two blues in this box. So blue is not there. If blue is here and I've reflected it here, I've got two blues in this region and that can't be right either. So blue is there and I've actually established a position of blue, but we don't know what the digit that blue is. 
Right, but can we do more Sudoku? You nearly. Blue's in one of those two squares. Right, and if blue's in one of those two squares, by symmetry, blue is in one of those two squares. Uh, look, that, that's just, that falls out of normal Sudoku. I did it by reflecting the blue across the diagonal. What about, where is blue in? Where's blue in this region? We do know blue and green are different, don't we? Yeah, so yeah. So blue 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 is in one of those two squares. And again we can reflect that across the diagonal, can't we? So blue is in one of those two squares. Right. And that's very annoying because actually that's that's used up all our blue -linesses. We've, we've got five blues actually placed in cells and four dominoes of blue that look very deadly patternish to me. So, so we, we're not going to be able to resolve these by reference only to blue is what I mean. We're going to have to have something else interrupting the flow of blue to figure out the patterns. And we only need one. We only need to get one of these because then they'll chain. Right, so let's try green. What can we do with green? Let's try, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where's green in this box? Oh, green, no, green, oh no, green has already appeared in it. I was getting very excited then. I was thinking I could place green here, but actually no, I can't. Um, well, all right, let's try green in this box then. So green, but green could be five, couldn't it? Okay, that can't be green. Because if that's green, that's going to put a green there by symmetry. And there's going to be two greens in this box down here. So green is not there. Green is not here. So green is in one of those two, I think. But if it was that one, it would reflect. And if it's this one, it doesn't reflect. Uh, yeah, that doesn't matter though, does it? So there'd need to be a reason this can't be green to do with the fact it causes fives everywhere. Golly gosh. Um, I don't want to I don't want to go down the route of trying to work out, you know, if that's a five, what does it do? Because it does do things, if you know that's a five. What's it gonna do? It's going to say we have to write a two into there, I think, and we have to write a four into there. I think that's what it does. And all of the all of the concomitant sort of follow ups from those things, i.e. the symmetry from those things. In fact, that's weird. Now I think about that, that's a slightly terrifying thought. That makes me think the only way you're actually going to be able to make progress with this puzzle is by backing into stuff sixes and nines or ones and fives. Because knowing stuff about twos and fours, which might emerge from, say, getting this was a five. Well, this is always, this cell is always doing something with twos and fours because it's in row two, column four. Not quite. I think this, oh, I don't think I'm that far away from having an insight here. How do we solve this? I'm just going to check whether I can put green into this one. Green is not in those. Green is not in these. Yeah, I, I can't put it in, but I can, I can tell you that green 
green can't go so green by sudoku can't go in those cells i've highlighted now green can't go there because its reflection is there and i get two greens in this box so green is in one of those two squares on the diagonal and that's uh, that's it that is it i think because i worked out there could only be one green on a diagonal so i don't i think if i think if i make this five green i can't put green at all in box one but i'm not i'm going to double check that green can't be blue no green can't be blue so these wouldn't be able to be green and if that's green that's green i get two green that's right that's right right so this is not green this is green and that is reflectable to here that's got to be so now I've got, I've got four green. If no, I've got six greens. Oh, I'm not going to get. Oh, Bobby, I know what I'm going to get. I'm going to get stuff in here that is unresolved, aren't I? Botheration, I am, I am, because they're going to reflect over there, aren't they? Ah, and we're going to get this sort of deadly pattern again. So whichever one of these turns out to be green will fix all nine greens in the grid. Ah. <laughs> and that was close. We were close to having an epiphany. Okay. Right, so I think what we need to do is to find another area of the grid where we can do... Well, what do, what do I think it is? It's either going to be law of leftovers or it's going to be the diagonal, I think. It's one of those two things. And I'm unsure. I don't really know how to even... I don't have any feel for which of those it is. And I'm not really doing a very good job as I stare at this grid of working out... Of working out law of leftover tricks I can see which is a bit interesting that there is six here and that's going to go in one of those three squares by law of leftovers trickery which means it's in one of those three squares where are the boundaries there yes okay so maybe maybe six on this diagonal is a place we could think about let's just think about that so what I'm saying, uh, by the way, the law of leftovers thing I'm noticing here is um, draw draw an imaginary line down this this section of the grid, uh, or if you want to do it by um, by set theory, that's a complete box of the Sudoku. That's a complete box of the Sudoku, and this is a complete box of the Sudoku. So those those cells I've highlighted contain three sets of the digits one to nine. Actually, I'll try and do it with colours. So I'll make those purple. It's going to get a bit messy. But obviously columns one, two and three are three sets of the digits one to nine. Let's make those grey. So grey and purple at this point are completely equivalent. If we didn't delete or remove from any, remove from both sets any cell that is in both sets, you can see we'd remove all of these and we'd be left with the fact that these three squares are equal to those three squares hence one of these is a six um, i'm not actually going to retain that coloring though because i think it'll confuse me but if one of those is a six i'm allowed to reflect that six across the diagonal there and that's a little bit interesting now in terms of the diagonal because the six in one of those three squares knocks six out are the first three cells of the diagonal. So six on the diagonal is not here, it's not there, it's not equal to one. Is it equal to blue? No, it's not equal to blue. Blue is in the sixes row. So six is in either there or there on the diagonal. And if it's right, let, I'm just gonna highlight those squares for a moment. If it's here, 
it's in row four, column four. So it's indexing fours into two places. So it's four there and four there, the sixth row and the sixth column. So if that's, if that's six, these two are fours, but four is not useful. And if, if this is six, we're indexing um, eights, aren't we? We're indexing eights into this square and this square, I think. So we either, it's very complicated because we're either index, we either result, it either results in us getting eights in the grid or getting fours in the grid. Neither of actually very useful digits, I don't think. Hmm. Oh, hang on, I've just seen something I haven't seen before. That can't be a one. I'm not allowed two ones on the diagonal. So one has moved over here. Can one be green? One can't be green. Well, I don't think one can be green. Hang on a minute. I don't think one can be green. <laughs> I think I'm going mad now. If one's green, that seems to suggest I've got a... No, I do. I have to put a one in one. No, there's a one in one of these. I don't remember how I got, how I got this as being green, but it does seem to be right. I th Right, I think I needed to revisit ones much earlier. I didn't realise this at all. So one, I don't think can go there. One has to go here, and that's reflectable to there. And hang about, I just tried to put an... This is huge. This is huge for many reasons. In fact, before we get on to those reasons, let me just see, can I get... One is not green, so one is in one of those three squares in this region, which is reflectable around... Oh. In the, around the diagonal but these are not in the same region so I don't really want to do that pencil mark because it'll confuse me mm, okay maybe that's not as straightforward as I thought it might be but no the, the other thought I had when I got the one here didn't I just say if that was if that Hang on, well, how did it work? If that's a six, I thought I had to put eight into this square. Well, and yeah, that can't be right, can it? I'm going to have, I'm going to do this slowly because I don't trust myself at all. But I think if that's a six, that is saying, because that's row eight, column eight, that is saying write an eight into here. It is it's definitely saying that. That's how these this diagonal works. If six is in row eight, column eight, then eight is in row eight, column six, row eight, which is there. It's that, that we've proved that's a one. That's definitely, this is not right. So this is not orange. So this is orange, that is six. That causes fours to flutter about and appear in the grid in those two positions, unless I'm going crazy. Uh, no comments, please, about me already being that way inclined. <laughs> it's been said before. Um, Now, right, well, now I'm going to repeat the trick. This, <laughs> now, remember what we said? We said those squares were the same as those squares. So I'm going to, I'm going to write four into one of those. I'm going to write four into one of those. Now I can't put four in any of those squares, that square. Uh, I could maybe go in the middle. So four is now in either that's, can four be blue? No, no, I've definitely seem to have a, a blue square looking at four. Four is not equal to five. So four can go in the middle of the grid or there. Now, what does that mean? I could make those both orange just so that we've got consistency of coloring. Um, so one of these purples is four. And if it's here, 
it's saying put 8 into there and there. If it's here, it's saying write 5 into there and there. Right. Uh, well, I don't know what to do with that, but I would note that that's completing our triumvirate here, isn't it? So if we do write fives into those two squares, then I think we're also writing fives into these squares, or one of these three squares. We'd also, I think, get fives in those squares. I'm not sure about that, but that's just where I was, what I was playing with with Sudoku in my mind just now. Three, four, five, six, seven. We'd have two more fives to place. Oh, and they're going to go in these three by threes in the corners. Ah, okay. Um, right. Maybe I've got to... Maybe I've got to think again about ones. I'm not sure. I think it might be ones, it might be nines. I'm going to try ones first. Um, I did get... Because I did manage to get ones over here. Yeah, and I haven't thought about ones since I realised this was a one. Or I haven't think, or thought seriously about ones since then. Where is one, for example, in that region? Not there. This one pencil mark says not here. This one says not there. One is in one of those two squares, I think. Let's actually pencil mark that with a colour. And both of those should reflect across the diagonal into the... Well, that's quite interesting because, because that reflection across the diagonal puts one in this position or this position. Now, that means this can't be a one because if that's a one, neither of these could be a one and we couldn't... We, in the end, once we worked through all of the, the weirdnesses, we couldn't put one into this box. So that is not a one. One is now in one of two places. And its equivalent then is one of these two places. Um, if one's there, if one's there, then again, that's that's part of this triumvirate, isn't it? No, oh, but we've already had one on the diagonal, so that's maybe not surprising. So if that's a one, that's a one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I have a, the other bad feeling I'm having now about this puzzle is I think it's one of these puzzles you could just get terminally stuck on. What I mean by that is that. I suspect this has a very, very linear path. This It doesn't feel like there's, you know, there's multiple deductions that we can make at any one point. It feels difficult. Hmm. Now, <laughs> Can we do anything with nine was the other digit I was going to think about, but I'm I don't really like the idea of thinking about nine, I have to say. Where is do we think nine is going to end up being green? It could be, couldn't it? I 
and it's a 50-50 chance. Nine is green in box three or box seven. Um, do we know whether nine... Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's in that is interesting actually. That is one point I've just deduced. Okay, where where is nine in this funny region here? It's clearly not in its own column. It's not it's not one, it's not five, it's not six. It could well be green. But it's not there, I've just noticed. Because if that's a nine, I think that's saying right five into that cell. And that's in the same region as I've got a 5 in. So I don't think that can be a 9. So 9 actually is restricted in this box. It's got to be in one of two places, I think. Probably in green. Now if, if 9 was there, well that would mean 9 was there. That would mean 9 was here. So we'd have, you get these, these sort of incredible patterns emerging in the grid. That This would mean 9 wasn't green. So 9 would be in one of those squares. 9 would be in one of those squares. Can 9 be blue? No, 9 can't be blue. So 9 wouldn't be blue. Actually, where is 9 in box 1 in this situation? It's very hard to put it in. I think it might... No, no, maybe it could be here. One of those two, I think. I'm not sure about that, actually. That might be incorrect. Although, no, it can't be in that one. It would be in that one. So that would be a 9, which would make that a 9, I think. Hmm. Oh, hang on. Now I've got... No, hang on. I've done something wrong, because I seem to have two 9s in the same row. I don't understand what I did wrong there. But that was That was complicated. Maybe I'm just going to think instead about where 9 is in this box. I oh, know because I don't know whether 9 on the diagonal or not. This is very confusing. <laughs> this is very confusing indeed. Um... Can I do anything with this at all? I'm beginning to think not. Um, oh dear. If... That's weird. Okay, let's try something crazy. And this, what I'm about to say might be absolute bobbins, but I just noticed something really odd there. Where is 9 in this box? I'm going to claim it's in one of those three, four squares, including it could be green. Okay, so it's definitely in one of these. Now, by, sy by symmetry across the diagonal, therefore, 9... The equivalent one of those I'm going to claim is in one of those sort of cells. Now, I don't think it matters which cell you pick for yellow now. Nine always ends up in green. Let me explain what I mean by that. Now, this is, this is really quite complicated, but... So, possibility one is that yellow and green are the same. So, obviously, then nine ends up in green. So, we, what we have to try and prove is, okay, well, what happens if nine is not in this cell? Now, 
But do we know, actually? Hang on. I, I don't like. I don't like what I've done there. I've got to be very careful about this because I don't want to. I don't want to indicate that there's any ambiguity about the fact these two are green. Okay, these two are definitely green. Let's remember that as well. So, let's go back to this. These two are definitely green. So, if yellow, if if the nine is on this green cell, obviously nine is green everywhere. Okay. So this one is not the interesting one. So let's take it out of there. So what happens if 9 is in one of the yellow cells? Now, if 9 is in this yellow domino, this yellow domino reflects across the diagonal to those squares. And those two squares being a 9 will mean that is not a 9, and the 9 in this box will be in green. So the paradox is you can't do that because that's already green. So you can't put 9 in these. It just doesn't work because it puts 9 in green and therefore that should be 9 by the logic we've established earlier. So these are not able to be 9. Now what happens if this, on the other hand, is 9? Well, if this is 9, remember this is the equivalent of these. So that would be 9. So if you make that 9, that's 9, and then 9 is green again. So 9 is always green. There might be a better way of seeing that, but that seems, that seems quite beautiful. So all of those are 9 which means these are not 9. 9, ah, uh, no bobbins. Well, yeah, so we've, we have proved that 9 is green here, haven't we? That is what we've just done. And therefore, 9 is not there. So, so we can actually pinpoint 9 everywhere in the grid. That is now nine. And that is in that is in row three, column three. So that's throwing a three here and a three here. And all of these nines are throwing digits around the grid. But we're just going to have to work out what those digits are. Right. So where do we start with that? Should we start with this one? Let's start with this one. Row 2, column 4 is equal to 9. So this is saying, this is saying throw a 2 down here into blue. And it's saying throw a 4 into here, because this is in the fourth column. And that's got to have an opposite, which is, <laughs> let's not get this in the wrong place, that's going to be there. The two needs to have it, so two is blue, so we can fill in a load of twos. That two is on the diagonal, and that is in row seven, column seven, so that is putting a seven here and a seven here. Now, did we get all of the knowledge we possibly could from this? So we've got twos and fours and their opposites. And the, and the nines. We did get six digits from that, which is what we would expect to get. Good. Good. Now. Okay, but we didn't use, for example, this square. We haven't used this nine yet. So this nine is in row five. Row five, column eight. So it's saying throw the eight in this row into the into this position. Throw the five in the column into this position. That says five there, eight there by symmetry. And that's all the digits we're going to extract from that one. But we've also got this one as well. So we're still making more progress. We've got this one to do. And this is in row six, column seven. So that's saying in the row, um, oh, it'll be so easy to make a mistake here. I think it's this is in the seventh column. So I think it's saying put seven in here, isn't it? And it's saying it's in the sixth row. So it's saying put six in here, fill in the equivalents across the diagonal. 
And the beautiful thing about that is it does seem to have filled in <laughs> row 9 and column 9 somehow uh, in the most peculiar way. Um, what was the, what was our purple digit going to be? Was that... I can't remember what that even was now. Um, I don't remember. What are these? This is a 3-4 pair. So that's 3 or 4 by symmetry across the diagonal. So that is a 3 or a 4. Was that one of the things we thought it was going to be? If it's a 3, what's it doing? It's putting an 8 here and an 8 here. If it's a 4, the 8s move up into those two positions. We don't know very much about 8s. We've only got this little poorly 8 in the grid. Um, right, so we might not be able to do that. Let's, let's try the diagonal. We need to put 3, 4, 7 and 8 into it. Yeah, okay, let's fully pencil mark that diagonal. 3, 4, 7, 8. I can see 4 can't go into those squares because we've got 4s pencil marked already. Now this square definitely can't be... What's, what region is that in? That's in that region with a 7 and an 8. So that can't be 7 or 8. That's a 3, 4 pair on the diagonal. So there is now a 7, 8 pair along this diagonal. And this one is indexing 1s and this one is indexing 2s. Well, uh, that doesn't work. Oh, there's a 7 here, so it definitely it's already resolved. That's 8, that's 7. 7 is indexing 1s, so there's 1s in those positions now. 8 is indexing 2s, so there's 2s in these positions. 2 is blue. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we finally resolved the 2s. We've got to put 2s into those two positions by Sudoku. They lose their flash. And have we done all the twos in the puzzle? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, we have, because we have got the two on the diagonal as well. Have we done all the ones in the puzzle? No, we haven't. But we might be able to do better with ones now, because we just got some ones as a result of that seven. Uh, let's think about that. We need, we've got five ones in the grid, so we need four more. Where is the one in this box? One, one of two places, I'm going to claim. And both of those are reflectable. Mm, I'm not sure if we can do that. Maybe this column is a better place to look because we've got this 3-4 pair. So we need 6s, 7s and 8s. And yeah, where's 7 in this column? I don't think it can go in those squares, so I think it has to go there. And now these squares have got to be 6 and 8. Now I've not used the power of this one. That's going to result in a 7 here. But also, let's think about it. So that's saying that is in the 8th column. So it's saying put 8 here. And it's in the 4th row. So it's saying put 4 here. So 4, 3, 4 go in. That becomes a 4 as a result of that little escapade. This is saying put 8s into the 3rd positions which gets us sixes and six by symmetry over there. That's a five, so that's a five. I'm not sure whether we should be focusing on um, symmetry stuff or just almost Sudoku stuff now. That's an eight. I don't know. I, I, think, I think I could have... There's eight here by Sudoku. This is three. We can fill these in across the diagonal. Eight, three... When we bump into a problem now, there is going to be no rescuing it. If this is wrong, I am absolutely um, somewhere without a paddle. Like these are one and five, which means that the, but we can copy those across the diagonal. So these are one and five. I can't see how that's resolving itself. Maybe did I did I do the the four implications? No, I didn't. That four is telling us that's in row five, column five. So that does it. Those are both five. Those are both one. Has that done the... Yeah, that has. Where's the one in this box now? It has to be there. So that has to be one. All the ones in the grid are now done. Let's fill those in all grey. That loses its grey. It loses its grey. 
threes, threes and fours. Well, we can make, oh, we haven't done all the threes. We, let's make them purple for the time being. Um, wow, can I put a, th yeah, I was just thinking, can I put a three into that region? But I think I can there. So that has to have a three. Yeah, that's okay. It's still working. Um, this is a, no, no, that's a six by Sudoku. That should be useful because that means I can fill six across the diagonal in. This has got to be five. That's got to be five. And hopefully these can be the same digit, which looks to me like it's four. Wow. What a puzzle that is. So let's, let's double click sixes. Have we, have we filled in all the colors that we've sort of, maybe I should give everything a color. That feels fair, doesn't it? Sevens can be light green. Fives can be yellow. And fours can be whatever I've got left. It might have to be black. And that, that needs to lose its flash. What a puzzle that is, Ard. That is so clever. Oh. Oh, right. This is because no one's managed to do it. Right. So I am the first person to solve it because the testers couldn't finish it. So I don't know if this is even correct. I don't even know how I'm going to know, know whether it's correct. Um, wah. I will, I'll have to spend some time, I think, uh, thinking about this because nobody has put the solution in. Um, so... I will try and work out whether there's any mistakes in this. I don't, I didn't find a mistake as I was solving it. I think I did it logically. The fact it's come out at all gives me quite some comfort that it's probably right. I mean, it's absolute genius. This man is an absolute genius setter because that, well, what I, hmm, there's many things I actually admire about this two given digits and this funny rule is enough to solve it but you have to understand the cycling and even understanding that then you have to understand the diagonal that, that you can't have a repeated digit i haven't got a repeated no i haven't got a repeated digit on the diagonal that's good um but even then then it was still quite difficult there may have been a better way. I don't know. I mean, this this stuff here was very pretty. The way that that stop digits appearing on the diagonal there. I don't know how you set something like this. It's just staggeringly brilliant, as always. Ard, take a bow. Take a bow. Let me know in the comments how you got on. We're just about in time for you to switch over to the streaming. I'm sorry, it's a long video again. Um, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.